prepare for trouble. And make a double. To protect our world from more isekai. To unite all people under Makoto Shinkai. To run away from zombies, androids, and trigun stampede. To explore new regions with Dr. Stone and Golden Kamui. Shaw. Tay. Team Adventure blasts off at 24 frames per second. And now here's Dr. Wilson for his annual check-in. Wilson, that's right! To celebrate the thrills that soar on high, in worlds where heroes quest beneath the sky, adventurers unite like stars agleam as we embark on this grand quest, a dream! In the realm of anime where tales take flight, we honor adventures each a radiant light. So come, let's journey through the fading night to uncover the best, heart soaring in delight. Here are your nominees for best adventure of 2023. <laughs> And the jury winner is Suzume. And the public winner is Mushoku Tensei Season 2. Now, when you're taking a look at these winners, I mean, Suzume, I, I think it's kind of interesting that it's classified as adventure here. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think of it as an adventure? I mean, they do travel all across Japan. And it, it, yeah. it has that kind of feeling, doesn't it? Yeah, it was one. I think that it's such a good example of a movie or TV show that doesn't feel like an adventure at first but then when you actually think about it the content is like an adventure across japan so it's something that when i saw it among the nominees i was like you know what that's actually a really good pick like that's really cool to see um especially because i think a lot of times when we think of adventure series we think of like a fantasy setting and so many of these nominees are just like adventuring through the different parts of J japan which feels kind of refreshing in a way because you never really think of that so uh i really like suzume when i saw it i thought it was a really cool cool movie i was about to call it a series because like i don't know the mushoku i uh, know the uh jinkai cinematic universe but no uh suzume <laughs> is a it's a great film i had a lot of fun with it and i did enjoy the uh the adventure through japan and the different types of um natural disasters they had as well as the journey for uh the really adorable cat mascot on social media so there's a lot of it a lot of adventures going on. So I think that's a really cool pick. Yeah, that misconception really showed me that when you Suzume, you make a Suze out of you and me. <laughs> I, I think you know, I think you up the bit rate. It's in, at least in terms of bits. But uh, <laughs> no, I think I think that's uh, it's a fun, it's a really fun pick. Um, I was excited. I was not sure if it would do well, but I'm very pleasantly surprised. Now, but are you is that your favorite? That's a good question. I was sitting here thinking, like, I'm not sure which would be my favorite between Suzume or Zom 100. I feel like those were really stand out. Or even, like, you know, Trigun Stampede, which is a really cool remake of a classic uh, 90s series. You know, I really was, like, not super pulling for any one of them. And I also knew um, Golden Kamu is, like, really acclaimed, and I've been sleeping on it since season one, and I got to get back to it. So I was really happy with, like, any of those winners. But... I was, I think I was pulling for either Suzume or Zom 100. So I think I would say, yeah, I'd say this is my favorite among the bunch. Now that I've worked my way back to it, I'd say this is a good winner. <laughs> Arum, uh, how, how like fiercely battled was the top slot? Was it, was it the kind of situation where any one of these top four could just be switched and it would make sense? Or was it Suzume pretty clear and far away the best from the beginning? Unquestioned. It was completely unquestioned. The only other series that we all agreed on 
was Golden Camley. Everything else was, I mean, you know, I don't think any of us really hated any of the nominees, but Susan May, it was just far and away. At the very beginning of the awards, we said, oh yeah, we definitely want to consider this. And then and nobody ever said pretty much anything bad about it the entire time. That's cool. Can I ask, what would uh, what do you think made Suza May the Picked over Golden Camu? That is a great question. Um, and I think it's really the uh, humanity that mm-hmm. was on display in the movie with um, each of those, you know, the little side characters that we meet on the journey. You know, we see, um, you know, this movie is about Suza May's arc, but we also have, you know, all these, you know, uh, very fleshed out, you know, very real feeling people uh, that aren't necessarily going on the journey with Susan May, but are part of that journey. And that really impressed themselves on the audience more than any of the side characters of Golden Family. That makes sense. I agree with the humanity aspect of it. I think there are a lot of really interesting dynamics that get explored in a very short amount of time. So I'm in agreement with the jury on that one. Yeah, the only character we um, that was really controversial was uh, the main maid character uh, in Sota, who was who kind of was in, in this compared to you know the last two, three, four Shinkai movies, um, and he didn't really have as much personality. Um, so there's definitely some debate over that, but we ultimately decided that all the other characters were so well fleshed out that he didn't really need to be um, as deep as Taki from Your Name or any of the other characters from season from Shinkai's li- library. Yeah. And I, I think that's pretty, that's on purpose, right? I remember reading an interview about how when doing this sort of like romance setup, he didn't want so much attention on the male MC. So that's why he turned him into a chair. For yeah. most of the, most of the yeah I remember hearing that. But at the same time, I really like the kind of themes of, I, I talked about this a little bit in the movie discussion, but you know, like the themes of like forgotten humanity and, and like how mm-hmm. places have such, have this like rich shared history that gets forgotten over time. And and that's kind of what's leaking out and causing all this all this distress. Um, and he, he's really cool for for seeking to preserve that. I thought. Yeah, I think he gets characterized by like people around him. Even like I think it was like his dad mm-hmm. who was in the hospital. And I I think he gets a really funny bit that he gets turned into a chair. I don't know. It adds a lot of energy and humor that I don't think we've seen in some of the previous Shinkai films as much. So even if they didn't have the same like romantic chemistry as some of the previous male and female leads um i think they had a funny dynamic so i was all in on them so i it was cool to watch it was cool and it's just really funny seeing a chair run around on social media <laughs> yeah, it really is I, I i love the use of social media here i mean yeah usually social media is like so like demonized and everything but this is like really like a, a bit of joy like how much like connection social media can bring now, moving on, we have the kind of classic, um, we actually haven't seen this very much in the other categories this year, I'm, which is kind of surprising. The um, Great Divide. <laughs> the Great Divide. So we, we've got jury winner, we, we've got public winner, jury loser. Although, you know, obviously no one is a loser. These are all great shows. They're all blah, blah, blah. What, what do you think the public sees in Mishoku Tensei that the jury uh, did? Can I first say this is my favorite result is jury <laughs> eight public one or vice versa i well the vice versa happens mostly because we feel like the public hasn't seen as many of the jury nominees or winners but jury eight public one always my favorite result it's a classic or is it nine it's a classic it i feel like it's an awards classic so i'm very honored to be here for my favorite type of result (laughs) you know what what could you say more about mushoku tensei that hasn't been said yeah. Um, on not all much spectrum. to Mushaku you. Not no Mushaku you. Yeah. Um, Mushaku Tensei over here, biggest <laughs> fan. But no. So I think um, you know there is a lot to be said for uh, isekai anime that you know make up so much of the seasonal anime that we watch, and you know Mushoku Tensei has a reputation for being you know one of the OGs, even if like. I don't know if there's like accuracy on that, but it has a reputation of being an OG. So I think a lot of people are really happy to see this, the story getting explored and seeing more seasons of it. And, you know, it, even if it doesn't look as great as season one did, it still looked pretty good. And, uh, you know, it had some ups and downs. This uh, this arc, I'm trying to not make a, a pun about uh ED, but like you can't avoid it. That <laughs> is, that is the plot of this one. So... <laughs> I mean, I was, yeah, I got to go all in on that one. So, you know, there's ups and downs, but at its core, there are some like very human characters and very human interactions that I think resonates with people. 
I know I'm personally probably not the best person to sing the praises of Mushoku Tensei, but like even I will go from like watching one episode and thinking it's it's not good to then going to another episode and saying, you know, that's pretty heartfelt. So I think if it manages to continue that heartfelt feeling throughout for people, then it's a really strong series. You thought or the jury thought, Arum? Mushoku Tensei, uh, well, I don't want the public to think that we're just prudes who hate it on principle. I know that myself and uh, at least a couple other members of the jury are fans of Mushoku Tensei, uh, but it was just this particular season, we felt a lot of it wasn't done well, particularly in the middle. Um, you know, it had a very mm-hmm. strong start, a very strong end, and then just the middle episodes like four to eight were just not it at all, very meandering, um, not really progressing the plot, not really doing anything with the characters. I um, mean, you know, just a, there's, um, you know, a romance later on that is much better, but definitely there is a lot that just wasn't doing it for us. And so ultimately the jury was kind of all agreed that it could fall towards the bottom. Is is this the season where he splits the bread or is that the first season? No, that's uh, season one, part two. Okay. Oh, hey, the amazing animation, animation is still there. Visually, it is. I mean, it's no Suzume, obviously, but it's up there. Yeah. And I think it's also tough because it's, I know we're grading like the best show in the adventure category. We're not grading them on how good they are as an adventure. But uh, you think of like Mushoku Tensei season one, part two, and there's a lot of great adventuring there. Whereas also in this season, you know, a lot of it just takes place in school, which is still like world building. You know, there's still adventure elements to that, but it it does, you know, it's it's all in one location. So it can make it feel a bit drier compared to other parts of Mushoku Tensei as well. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Can either of you tell me what the Hulk is Hulk? <laughs> I saw the title. I was like, what the Hulk is this? And it's so hard <laughs> not to make a pun about it. Uh, is it? But I, 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 I'm, I'm so I'm gonna be so disappointed if it's not like as wacky as its name. Please tell me. It's, please tell me it's not just like a school. I have good news. Thing. Okay. So Hulk. Um, Hulk was the <laughs> thing that back when it came out, if you might remember, that all the manga readers were hyping up. It's gonna be the greatest thing ever. Uh, and then it came out late and it had a very slow start with very weak opening episodes, and everybody dropped it and nobody watched it. But I will say, once you get past those initial. And there's a, it's a very slow start. But once you get past that initial episode, um, I mean, first of all, it's just funny all the way through. Helk is the name of our main character, who is this, who's this supposed hero who is joining the demons. And there's this, you know, great mystery carrying through the whole thing. And the whole thing is just comedic and lighthearted at the same, well, at the same time, going into some amazing world building and big, larger political elements. That does sound interesting. Yeah, it, it, it's a really funny premise. I saw, I got to experience it where it's like the he, like I think the demon king gets defeated. So then the demon world's trying to find a replacement, and then you just have like this human who hates humans who's being their champion. <laughs> and then um, I think like the main girl is trying to stop him because she's like, obviously he's a human, he's gonna betray us, but he's like, nah, I no, I'm all in on this. So it's I'm, really I'm funny, Hulk, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before we leave, I just really wanted to ask about Zom 100, mostly because. An anesthesiologist at my work was trying to get me to watch it, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, dude, I'll totally watch it." I just like never did, but mostly because it like was on this like big hiatus or something, but finally came out. Like, what was what was up with all that, and and should I listen to my colleague? I mean, I think it's definitely worth watching. It's definitely one of the most interesting of this of the year. I wanted to say season, but it cr- crossed multiple seasons with its <laughs> hiatus. Um, I think. The hiatus definitely hurt the momentum of it a bit, but at its core, it's a it's a really interesting, compelling show about, you know, not letting life pass you by and, you know, enjoying the day to day experiences of living life. Um, you know, and if you're working long hours at work, I think you can definitely resonate with it. So I definitely recommend it. And I think it's worth checking out. And as you can see, you know, the public and jury are, are pretty much in agreement on that one coming in second and third. I'd say it's definitely a standout for the year. The long hours are definitely true, so I may have to uh, to jump on that. Yeah, I'd recommend it. I think you'll be able to tell. I think some people say that it falls off after episode one. I disagree with that. I do think it's a great, great first episode. But um, if you're working long hours, you will definitely resonate with episode one. So uh, I'd say check it out and then keep pushing through and see uh, what all the hype is about. Now, Ram, did you play... Through all of Near Automata before watching Near Automata, I did not touch Near Automata before before today. <laughs> it was an interesting experience. How did you like the world of Near Automata and Two B? 
It does does to be deserve it, her meme status. I'm gonna be honest. The only reason, oh well, to be to be is great, but I'm gonna the be honest. Reason the reason that, that watches... near Automata probably is an eight is because of that atmosphere. The reason it got a seven instead of eight that I managed to uh, take down Mushoku Tensei and leave us in this conundrum was because it just has such a very strong atmosphere. It is very much an idea show, and I would suppose an idea video game as well. Mm-hmm. I would, which when you when know, you it, think about it, adventure is pretty much predicated on atmosphere and, and world building, right? Would you say? Yeah. Because, I, I mean, the, the, the kind of concept of adventure to me, right, is that you have to have something that you want to explore and see more of. And, and that's why so many people point to One Piece as kind of like this ideal adventure show, right? Because the world building, world building is so on point and you just want to see some more of this, like, kind of crazy giant's playground. Would you say that applies for a lot of these shows in the nomination list looking through them they definitely all have a strong world um whether or not it explores them well it's uh up to each show but they definitely <laughs> all have an evocative and unique world to them so i would say that absolutely applies here yeah i agree i think that's a good way of putting it and even though there's so many that are japan but not japan i think it's cool that they you know give different li- a different light to like different locations in Japan. And, you know, they've managed to give a different atmosphere to different locations in Japan. So even if they're trying to be based somewhat in reality, it's cool to see different perspectives on that. Like Suzume and Zom 100, they're both like modern day Japan, but they still feel completely different from each other. Yep. And then Dr. Stone, also technically Japan, but yeah, um, yeah. It's... But a, but a new world. Yeah. You could almost say. <laughs> I think we've come up to the end of our segment. I want to thank both of you for speaking with me. It's been a great time. It's been an adventure. Thank you for having me. And yeah. I know Tay is, you know, be, Tay is Poor Tay. somewhere saying, uh, why the hell did you guys do this without me? And I know they would say it exactly because that was a bad pun. So you're here in <laughs> well, spirit. To you, the audience, I, I will tell you to adventure forth to, to Susume, Susume, um, into a new world in a big stampede and complete your your bucket list. I think that's the best I can do. Bucket list of hearing anime of 2023? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right, bye. (laughs) Bye.